Today, I wanted to take a look at some anime that might have flown under some people's radars. The first one I wanted to start off with is Death Parade, a 12 episode series that ran in the winter of 2015 by Studio Madhouse. Yes, that catchy opening Flyers by Bradio is probably the thing that most people remember. It's probably because it ran opposite to the entire show's basis. Seeing how there was the word death in the title, the gloomy mood found throughout was to be expected. But there was something about this anime that pulled me in. It had its concept, which was simple enough. That's not the end of it though. The way it ran with it, that's what kept it in my mind this entire time. Starting off with the premise of this series, when two souls die at around the same time, they're sent to a bar called Quindecum and forced to participate in a game that has the ultimate purpose of evaluating the value of their souls. This is done by the Arbiter. Now, if Quindecum ends up being real, I think I'd take advantage of the fact that it's an open bar. Since these episodes focus on the two individuals, their stories usually end up being within the episode, maybe bleeding over to a second. The people are already dead, but they don't know that. Which means that the game they're playing, they genuinely think they're gonna live. And in doing so, this want and desire actually reveals who they are on the inside. It hits home that they were like this when they were alive. Now this series was beautiful for sure, especially for its visuals. The background art made sure to give the bar this glitzy, high class feel. Still, the bar kept an air of mystery as the places they had to play their games would pop out of nowhere, almost if there was no real explanation to it or no logical order of why it had to show up there. The wide variety of shots as well, they definitely didn't hold back there. Sometimes, the camera would just sit back and let the scene unfold before the audience. Other times, it loved being in people's faces, especially when they were freaking out, so it would capitalize on any discomfort, anguish, and sorrow. Animation was very well done, fluid, lifelike. Really made them feel like desperate, recently deceased humans. There was also some visual storytelling, primarily with the masks to imply the fate of the various subjects when they were judged. This anime is pretty, yes, but it didn't lack in the area of character writing either. And while each game may have varied with the level of sympathy that the audience gave, but it definitely tried its best in making each person's plight understandable. Now, for our two main characters, Deckham and the black haired woman, they're the common element that we follow throughout the various episodes and people. So naturally, the most change the audience would see would be with them. The various people that are being judged themselves though are remarkable in their own right, coming from so many different paths, some good, some bad some just in between. To end up here, some may have made a mistake that turned fatal. Others were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. To have the twist of competing in a death game in where you're already dead, see, it's not to make it tense. It's to find out who they really are. As these games play out, so do their actions, and agree with them or not, it comes from a place of being cornered and desperate. No matter how different lives were being led, the fact that there was a life there to begin with is something remarkable in its own right. Now with Deckham and the black haired woman, both were exceptional in their own circumstances. Now for Deckham, despite his stoic demeanor, he is an arbiter implanted with human emotions, which throws the whole objective judgment from above thing out of the window, at least for him. With each ruling that he hands down, he learns a little more about humans, but it's unlike how the others around him learn. Now his superior, Nona, has rather mysterious motivations and reasons to learn about human emotions, which leaves her to be a questionable ally while his partner Ginty just doesn't give a damn about them. Deckham is learning from a place of empathy. He's learning about the people he's judging because he's feeling everything they're feeling as they play these games. Any clue of emotions showed as miscalculations in his deductions or a brief surprise at an unexpected discovery. Now the black haired woman is bizarre because although she's human as well, she's not judged and allowed to stay in Quindecum. Just a side note here, they call her the black haired woman but her entire outfit is mostly in black. And whether that's just a visual detail to complement the mood of the work, or actually an attempt at foreshadowing, I can't say for sure. But when the mysterious origins of the woman is finally revealed, her own share of suffering comes along as well. Even with the previous implication pointing that she may have committed suicide, it's still painful. As the two get used to each other's company throughout the series, they learn, bouncing off of each other, more and more about the other. That's why, when it's finally time for the black haired woman to be judged, it ends up becoming a test for both Deckham and her. Deckham described the job of the Arbiter was to draw out the darkness in order to judge a person's worthiness of being reincarnated or thrown into the void. He is effectively judging humanity from a scale of negative. It's fitting, isn't it? We're always losing anyways. I mean, these people have already lost their lives, right? As the show demonstrates with the various contestants, 
People don't just lose their lives when they die though. Some may have started an important part of their life, had dreams they wanted to achieve no matter what, a person that was irreplaceable. Everyone had something before death. But it's the fact that there was something on the line to lose that gave it any worth at all. Hell, the fact that people can manage this in the first place in a life that seems so random and fragile, that may be the reason that there's a value at all. Now Death Parade was definitely a show that was loved by the people who watched it, but I don't think that was that many. I'm still happy with how it ended, and I think back to it from time to time. It had its work in setting up stakes for tense fights for survival, but it also reflected on what the human condition is in its entirety. It left me with a hurt so good feeling, if that's a way I could put it. Now with the implication of a second season and the final episode, I'd like to hold on to hope, but it's a slim one at best. That's fine though. I'm sure that is a show that a person could start out with, or come back later to, to enjoy. But either way, I hope you guys pick it up.